In the last video of turning my 2.5 RS into a 22B P25 cross weird mix thing, we got the engine bay and the interior painted on this thing. Prior to that, we had gotten the undercoating done. So at this point, we can start reassembling the car with a lot of the refinished parts like those and many others that I've got sitting around the shop to start getting this thing to look like a car again. And it'll help clean up the amount of just parts that are absolutely scattered everywhere in here because let me tell you, they are everywhere. Now because this paint is still fresh, I want to avoid doing anything that's going to require us to screw bolts, nuts, anything like that into fresh clear coat so that way it can still cure and harden up over time. So the majority of the stuff that we're going to be doing are things like brake lines, things that go underneath of the car, the fuel tank, stuff like that so that way we are not going to ruin our fresh paint job on this because it looks so incredibly good. Now the background of things, I have been sending a lot of stuff out to powder coat. We have our rear diff brace, we've got our rear seat brace, rear subframe, drive shaft, and a ton of other stuff that I've got shoved way up there so they didn't get damaged with most of those being brake lines. So while we may be limited to what we can do over the next couple of days, there's still a lot we can get on the car, refurbished, refinished, and ready to go. The transmission, the rear diff, and all of that still needs to get cleaned, painted, uh, or coated. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do quite yet for that stuff, but there's still an absolute ton of stuff that we need to get knocked out. So. I actually want to start with these long brake lines here because they've been floating around the shop. I don't want them to be damaged and I don't want them to get scuffed. You know what? I want everything to look nice and clean still because it all still is so fresh, so nice and still so clean. For any brake lines that we have, I do want to blast these out with a little bit of compressed air. Just to get dirt and dust off of them, but also to get any brake fluid that's in there out. The front. So as we started to try to figure out where to put these brake lines, it was really like a puzzle because to be honest, we didn't really know which ones went where. We tried Googling a couple pictures and it gave us a little bit of a sense of where each brake line roughly kind of went, but to be honest, there's a lot of guess and check trying to get these sorted. So we have the brake lines figured out. There's a lot of guess and check that went in here. Levi and I had to go back and forth with it, but we got it figured out. So this is just mocked up in here right now. That is obviously going to come back out, but we needed that there to figure out which brake lines went where. It's a little confusing, a little difficult to like explain, but you've got like this one swoopy line here that comes down and it goes down there to the front left. You've got these two right here, which come up, come around, go down with the giant bundle, come up, and those two go here to master cylinder one, master cylinder two. Here you've got rear right and rear left. Those are gonna go up to the back side of the proportioning valve here. You've got the two hard lines that we put in earlier that run through the car. And then the last two are going to run to the front left and front right there. So it's a little confusing, but the brake lines are in. They look great. They're all Cerakoted black. I cleaned up the proportioning valve as well to get that back in. So super stoked with that. I'm trying to only do little stuff right now. So that way it still gives the clear coat time to cure and harden up. But there's some little things that we can do here and there. I'm giving it at least one more day before I really start bolting things up like brake boosters, master cylinder reservoirs, things like that. So what we are gonna install next is our throttle pedal because it's another thing that I just have sitting around. Now this is an iWire throttle pedal adapter for drive-by wire throttle pedals for these two doors. Now this won't just bolt up. You have to use this adapter. I don't quite know where it's going to bolt yet, but we can figure it out. It'll go somewhere right down there. We'll have to take this back off later on, but it looks like this really can only go on one way, which is right here for the electronic throttle. Now the whole reason that you'd want to do this conversion is if you're doing this merge and you're using a modern ECU or a newer ECU that utilizes drive-by wire, you're going to need to have this conversion plate because the, uh, the drive-by wire throttle pedal doesn't just bolt up. So you gotta have this. Now we will have to probably take this back out later to put, we actually might not have to for the steering column right there, but it can literally only mount on 
in one spot. Throttle pedal here, and this goes on, this is an 05 STI throttle pedal, so I think this, this plate has different configurations for different pedals, so just make sure that whatever pedal you're using, you look it up, but I mean, you can, you can very easily look at it and say, okay, it lines up one way, so this is how it goes on. Now, I don't like how like flimsy that feels though. Like the whole thing just feels kind of flimsy. There's some flex there that I don't love. I might make an additional support piece that supports this so that way this can't flex back like it is now. Maybe just like a spacer or something that goes against the body. Just something to keep this from flexing back like that. At this point, I was just trying to clear out some space in the shop. So I started grabbing whatever I could bolt on the car that made sense for right now. The headlights don't necessarily need to come off for a while because they are a two piece because they have a corner piece on them. So I figured we could get the headlights on. Now these are just a generic Depot headlight. Depot does make OE manufactured headlights, but the OEM glass ones are discontinued and quite spendy. These Depot ones are glass as well and they are pretty much identical to OEM. Also got some of the heat shields back from powder coat. So, well, these are Cerakoted, but Figured, why not? We can toss on some of these so that way they're not sitting around with everything else. Now I've gotten the transmission cross member brace back along with a couple other transmission pieces, but I did have some new Cartboy positive shift kit bushings to toss in, so I figured we might as well just assemble our transmission cross okay, member. So that, once the transmission is ready to go more. back in, we already have the cross member done. I continue to just bolt on small things that I had sitting around the shop up until I got the ABS module bracket back from powder coat. So that way we could just kind of wrap up the brake lines. I think I'm gonna start by actually bolting the module in place, which it is going to go in right there. And then we've got two 12 millimeter bolts that are gonna go in it. Now we're gonna play the fun game of get all the brake lines to thread into their homes nicely. There's two, there we go. Like I said, you gotta be extremely careful with this stuff. You strip these things out, you are in for a bad time. You'll destroy your ABS module. You can destroy lines. So we do wanna make sure that they're all nice and snug though, because if they're not, like I said, they will leak brake fluid. It'll eat through your paint. You gotta do all this all over again. There we go. Not going anywhere. Now I thought I was gonna be painting the transmission, but to be honest, I started wire wheeling it and after about 20 minutes, I just didn't wanna do it anymore. So I hit up my dry ice guy and we're gonna go take this thing to get laser cleaned as well as dry ice blasted before we Cerakote this transmission. So I've been racking my brain with things to do on the Subaru while we wait for everything. And we can go ahead and actually knock out sound deadening. So these are all of the body plugs. I just went through, cleaned them all, got a new tube of seam sealer, and we need to seam seal all of those body plugs into the chassis. Now, what those body plugs are originally there for, I can't give you the 100% answer. I've heard things like they're there for if the car floods, you can drain out the water. I've heard things that when they paint the cars, they dip them, those are the drainage holes. So I'm assuming it's one of those two things, but regardless of the fact, we need to seal it up and get these in before we can put in our sound detonating. I am using Killmat. It's exactly what I used in the RX-7. I've been pretty happy with the application of it. You just use these little rollers, roll it on, and it sticks on there pretty well. Um, with this, this is a car that I wanna do some like long-term driving with, and I would like to not get the absolute poop beat out of me by vibrations and sounds and all that stuff, and that Killmat works pretty well, and I still have some left over.
We have our sound detonating in for the most part. I do need to order a little bit more to kind of wrap up this. There's a couple spots on the trans tunnel you guys can see right there on the other side. I would like to get up here in between where the uh, fuel tank access doors are and then back there in the trunk. I, uh, I completely ran out. Tossed in one of the rear brace bars for the back of the car, as well as the hood latches and the rear sway bar mounts, just because I had them sitting around. Figured we might as well toss them on as well. So I'm, tr I'm like back in that spot where I'm trying to figure out what I can even do right now. So with our sound deadening pretty much wrapped up, I wanna jump over to the fuel tank. There's still a little bit of fuel left in that, but get the fuel out, get all the fuel lines off of it that we're not using, clean it up, respray it with some new undercoating, let that thing sit for a couple of days because we can't even install it till we get our hardware in because the one thing, technically I could put it in right now with the hardware I have here, but the problem is, is I'm not gonna be able to get to these brake lines that are up here to be able to put the um, valve in that connects them all together without covering it with the fuel tank, so. So right here we have our 2005 STI fuel tank. This is what's gonna be going into the car. It should be a drop in fitment, but before we get this in, I do wanna remove everything off of here that we're not gonna be using, such as the three hard lines coming off of the stock fuel tank because we are gonna be using a radium hanger. So we're just gonna have our feed and return off of our new hanger. We can actually take this one out. There is still a little bit of fuel in this thing, so we need to drain that out. But before we do the draining, I kinda of wanna strip off these lines and get, get kind of this stuff out of the way. Take off all of this that's kind of just chilling on the backside to make it a little bit easier. I took a whole bunch of photos so we should be able to remember where it all goes. So for those that are curious, this is what I've been using for a lot of the smaller stuff like this. It's just 3M rubberized undercoat. You can pick this up at like any auto parts store. So we've got like this guy here. It's just like just a little retaining clip. Nate coming in clutch for us. He brought us more sound detonating. He went straight, it's from Russia. He went straight to Russia to get that stuff. Straight to Russia. Straight through jail. We got these three lines loose. We can actually, one of these just looks like evap from the charcoal canister, which is this line here, which is the blue hard line. And that's what feeds all the fuel vapor back into your engine. The other two is feed and return. So I might be able to just pop these off by hand. Doesn't matter too much. We're just gonna pull that hanger out. The hanger's not gonna go back in since we're putting a radium one in here. Release evil demon. There's that one. <laughs> Boom. So these three lines not getting used. There we go, filler neck. There's a drain there and a drain there. Damn it. Wish I would have known, but whatever. So with the fuel tank drain, I'm gonna grab a little uh, bristle brush. We're gonna bristle brush this, rinse it off, uh, let it dry, and then respray it. Make it look new. Now while this cures, let's go wrap up sound deadening since uh, Nate was a G and brought us some more to use.
All the sound deadening is wrapped up. Actually, all together, we're all done with sound deadening now. All I wanted to do was the spare tire well, part of the trunk, the back seat I'm actually happy with, and this is good for what I was thinking as well. I don't really wanna pull it back all the way back here. I mean, we could, but I don't really see a need for it as most of the transmission noise is gonna be happening up here. That's mainly just drive shaft there. Fuel tank is looking good as well, but I am going to let this sit upside down for a day so that way all of this can cure because I did make this mistake on the RX-7 where I did rush it and we ended up with a whole bunch of imprints and whatnot in the fuel tank, but that looks phenomenal for that 3M undercoat stuff uh, we'll do the other side in probably the next video and then once that's done and our hardware comes in we can actually get the fuel tank up and in the car I've got some more parts up at powder coat right now the brake booster is getting Cerakoted uh, as well as a handful of other stuff for the transmission the transmission line that feeds fluid from one side of it to the other side and a whole bunch of other little transmission bits the pitch stop mount all that stuff so that way it all looks fresh and brand new in here we may go to the extent of actually Cerakoting it this time we have a portable media blaster that we might try using on the transmission up at Ben's shop and then Cerakoting it and letting it sit for a couple of days. So, or maybe you can come down here and do it. But that's all I got for you guys on this one. I, like I said, I'm, I'm fairly limited on what I can do right now up until our hardware comes in, our parts show up or the wide body shows up. So I'm kind of at the mercy of external factors. I will continue to try to think of other things that I can do on this, but I'll, I'll think of something. We'll figure something out. I don't know, but with that, that's all I got for you guys on this one. So if you like the video, you know what to do. Go ahead and hit that like button, turn it black, blue, green, yellow, purple, silver sign, whatever color turns for you. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you wanna be, I'll put it in one of these corners. No idea which one quite yet. But with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. So peace out, homies. Woo!